Are you ready for the two-headed monster for Halloween that the Warriors want? I've teased this. Yes, are you, you did. Are you, are you ready? Repeatedly. Are I'm, you? I'm sitting in a chair. I don't know how much more ready I need to be. Let me just ask you this about the two-headed monster. Do you believe in Kavon Looney? I think yes, very much so. I do, too. Steve Kerr clearly does. And by the way, so does the NBA. Do you know that right now Kavon Looney is tied for the fifth best plus-minus in basketball? He's, got, he's plus 51 in his on-court time so far this year. Steve Kerr obviously believes in this guy. Kavon Looney is a completely made man with the Golden State Warriors. There is no doubt about that. No doubt about it. No, I mean, no, I just, it's, that's painfully evident. And in fact, I would be willing to bet you that Kavon Looney will be a warrior until the day Steve Kerr retires. Whenever that is, Steve Kerr will never let him go. That's his Udonis Haslam? More than Udonis Haslam, because he's one of those guys who subtly, he's now a team leader. He's a first, he's first, he's, he's Steve's first rook, his head coach, so there's always that. There's a guy who's played himself through nerve damage, like leg neuropathy, as we were talking about, if you're looking for an example of patience, I think if you're a young guy who's got you know uh, an injury thrown at you earlier in your career, certainly Kavon Looney is a shining example of things could still happen. But you got to learn the fundamentals to be important to the Warriors. You got to be in the right position, not some of the time, but all of the time. Your footwork has to be basically perfect. Let me ask you a second question: Do you believe in James Wiseman? I don't know yet. That's fair. Totally fair. Um, I think I do believe in James Wiseman. Like, I can see it. I, I can see that there's something there that when I think about how he and Kavon Looney now complement each other, Ray, this is a really unique two-headed monster. A very unique two-headed monster. James Wiseman backing up Kavon Looney is a top three center in the NBA right now. I mean, you need two guys to get it done, but this is a really good NBA center. We're talking about 38.3 minutes, about 20 for Kavan and about 18 for James Wiseman. And you put them together and you got a functioning piece that complements each other based on how polar opposite the two of them truly are. Now think about it. It's maybe the... As as unique a gap in player differences of any two-headed monster that you can think of. Name me two big men who are more different from each other than James Wiseman and Kevon Looney, right? So whoever you're playing is literally the exact opposite of the guy that you were just playing a minute ago as soon as there's a substitution one for the other. So that is always just a little hard to keep up with and tabs on for any sort of strategy you're looking to have out on a basketball court. And really, like one guy's entire career promise is based on the concept of I'm enough of an athlete to dunk on this entire gym. The other guy's career promise is based on the well, I'm not that, but what I am is the guy who boxes out the one guy who's enough of an athlete to dunk on this gym. Yeah. He's <laughs> the guy He's the guy who would prevent the guy who can dunk on the gym from dunking on the gym. Yeah, it, it's amazing. In fact, weirdly enough, you cited that plus minus stat on, on uh, Looney. Uh? James Wiseman is 415th out of 416 players in plus minus. So we're going to get into that. Because his plus-minus is terrible. Jordan Poole's plus-minus is terrible. He's 412. And Jonathan Kaminga's plus-minus is terrible. Which is amazing considering how little he's played. Well, I think it's part and parcel of how little he's played, to be totally well, honest. Well, no, it is. But to achieve that number yeah. in that few minutes is pretty remarkable. Now, you're looking at it right now, so don't just spoil it for everyone. Guess who has the worst plus-minus in the NBA? I already knew this, so right I'm now, not going today. to answer it. Kevin Durant. Yes. Kevin Durant's got the worst plus-minus in professional 
basketball. Raise your hand if you would have guessed that. How many stabs at that would you have needed before your knife plunged into the right answer? You know who else has a terrible plus minus so far? And again, plus minus is not a great stat, except maybe as a as something comparable after you've played like 25 games or not. Ben Simmons has a terrible. He's like minus 43. You know, I mean, that's... Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, again... I mean, what, it's, a statement, are, it's a statement that Brooklyn's not very good yet. Brooklyn's not playing a lot of defense. I promise you you're going to find some Philadelphia 76ers down in the bottom third of that league because their defense sucks right now. And the Warriors' defense has been not what they wanted it to be, and that's why their second unit is buried on plus-minus charts. As bad as Andrew... Or excuse me. As bad as James Wiseman's plus-minus is, Ray, how do you feel about PER? Player efficiency rating, the John it, it's Hollinger. It's a more maybe. useful stat than right. plus minus. It is not the definitive end all be all of player evaluation, but it measures enough things to be a well rounded enough stat to explain some player value. So, number one player efficiency rating on the Golden State Warriors right now is, is Steph Curry. Steph Curry has a 26.27 player efficiency rating. It's 18th best in the NBA. Right now, Andrew Wiggins is number two on the Golden State Warriors with a 2127 player efficiency rating, which is good enough for the 40th spot in the NBA. Now, the player efficiency number can fluctuate greatly based on how much court time you're getting. So the more court time a young player with a great PER might get in limited minutes could shrink dramatically if he were out there longer than those limited minutes and get exposed. But I really don't think that that is going to be a problem ultimately for the Warriors number three in PER so far in this year. Care to guess who that is if you're not already looking? I'm, I am not looking. It's James Wiseman. James Wiseman is number three right now on the Golden State Warriors' entire roster in PER. He's the 54th best in basketball. Again, it's a limited amount of court minutes in comparison to other guys who are on this list. And maybe more court minutes for James Wiseman exposes him to the point where that PER goes down, not up. But obviously you're hoping for the opposite of that, that the more court minutes that James Wiseman makes and has, it'll go up. Uh, What I'm saying here is there is something incredibly interesting happening in the Warrior Center position when you look at these guys, how they form that two-headed monster. What we know Kavon Looney does and does well, what we hope James Wiseman can do now well and will continue to do better, I think it's just a fascinating thing to look at. And instead of breathlessly analyzing the minutes that Jonathan Kaminga didn't get. Another way to look at this basketball team over the next 10 games or so is to look at what James Wiseman's doing backing up Kevon Looney. Well, Wiseman's a more important player right now. I mean, that I don't think anybody has a question about that. And given the fact that Wiseman's PER number is as good as it is, it is an indication that his plus-minus number, which stinks, when you combine it with all the other Warriors whose plus-minus numbers stink... That's a measure of their team defense. And I mean, their, that unit's defense, which is appall- appalling. It, that, that's why they don't get more minutes, because they don't defend. And that's why their plus-minus numbers are so bad. Because it's not a surprise that Jordan Poole's number is through the roof. It's not a surprise that Kaminga's number is through the roof, even though he doesn't play much. I mean, uh, Jermichael Green's number is you know, well you know, into double-digit minuses. I mean, they're not good as a unit defensively. And, in fact, to say they're not good as a unit defensively is giving them way too much credit. So the PER, A, is a better standard, and B, to me, the, the, the notion of the two-headed monster makes me wonder if there are scenarios in which they could be on the floor together. So and, I was- they don't, and they don't seem to mesh well but I think at some point they're gonna they're 
their paths are going to intersect. Their Venn diagram is actually going to meet, and there will be minutes where they're both on the floor, and that's when it'll be fun. I think I got your opponent. I like how you're thinking. You're a step ahead of the conversation. Exactly where I was going with this. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's good. It means we got kismet, you and me. That's why it works, honey. Um, it's the Minnesota Timberwolves. Who's rolling out two bigger guys in the middle, even though Carl Anthony Towns is rarely in the middle, but that's Rudy Gobert's job now. I think when this team gets to the Minnesota Timberwolves, we might get our first look at what would James Wiseman and Kevon Looney look like out on the court together? That feels like it would be the right opponent to maybe check that out with. So I, I, You might see at least a little bit of it. I don't know that Steve Kerr would trust James Wiseman on Carl Anthony Towns yet. Just because he's still prone to foul, and if he gets into foul trouble, all of a sudden, now Kavon Looney is going to end up being overmatched by either one of those guys. So I think you'll still see a lot more Wiggins on Towns than you would Wiseman, but I think there will be spell, little spells here or there where that'll happen. The other little wrinkle to what really would happen if this two-headed monster takes root and it's something that you can count on night in, night out. Like at the five, you either got Kevon Looney or James Wiseman, and that's pretty much the way the Warriors are playing. Boy, that takes an awful lot of body weight off of Draymond Green, doesn't it? If Draymond Green can play the four, drift into that three a little bit, he doesn't get beat up on the low blocks, banging against guys who he's given six inches and 50 pounds to every single night. And that is, I just think, a good way to go about preserving the year that you hope you start getting from Draymond Green. So the two-headed monster can benefit the Warriors in a lot of ways, and Draymond not picking up collateral damage as a small ball five when the other team hasn't gone small yet and he's still getting banged on. It's a good way to find a decent win total when this season is over after all. Like I said, we're four games into a year. We have 78 games remaining. So the people who are breathlessly trying to analyze the war, you know, oh my God, what is that? What What is wrong with this team's minutes? What is wrong with these young guys? What is wrong with the young unit? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. I have good news for everyone. I understand we have, you know, content to create. And vacuum to fill and, and all shovelfuls to hurl. Look, but I just, I want to, I don't even know if this is good for us because, we, you know, Sports Talk Radio loves to sell panic. There's no reason to be panicking about the Golden State Warriors. Not even close. Not, not even, not even close. You want to panic about the Golden State Warriors? Troy Murphy starting the night. That's what panic looked like. Not the, and by the way, Troy Murphy wasn't bad. <laughs> you should, no, he should. That's, that's a shot. It's just, he, he's better than that. But look, this is, this is not, nothing's wrong with the start of the Warriors. What's wrong with the start of the Warriors season? Nothing. Nothing is wrong with the start of the year. No, there's one thing that's wrong. They are giving up way too many points. Right. And that is not, I mean. We're going to work on that, though, is my point. No, no. That's going to well, solve yeah, itself. Well, they are. They I mean, are. I'm they not going to bother. You and I have no solutions. They're on, they're on their own. But I don't remember a stretch where they've had three games where they have been, if not, out and out hopeless, then profoundly disinterested because they want to play at a ridiculously high pace that they're not qualified to do. I mean, they might have been able to do this for a few games here or there, but their pace now, and Steve Kerr said it. It's unsustainable. It's not, yeah, it's unsustainable and it's foolhardy. You know, they're, they're at the stage now where they're not only supposed to be who they are talent-wise, but they're supposed to be smarter than the teams they play. What they did against Phoenix was get let Phoenix dictate the pace and let them continue to dictate the pace. That's why the defense is a problem. I mean, they they allowed they allowed the um, you know they allowed Denver to manufacture pace. The Warriors need to be the ones who control the game, and by that I mean not just shooting percentage and rebounds and all that other stuff. It's maintaining the rate at which plays develop, plays happen, plays end, the next play starts. They're not doing that yet, and I would think that they should be at least further along in that part of the game because they've done that before. Steve Kerr with us yesterday. The pace through four games has been just ridiculous. I mean, it is so high, uh, unsustainably high. 
we've always believed in playing with pace, but right now it just feels like I'm looking at a pickup game. You know, we're, we're flying up and down the floor. We're giving up all kinds of uh, transition uh, opportunities to our opponent. We're dead last right now in transition points allowed per game. We're not really playing with a purpose. You know, that can mean a lot of different things. What that means to me is we're not connecting the game offensively and defensively. When you have good offensive possessions and you take good shots, generally you're in position to get back defensively and to, to get a stop and vice versa. You know, you, you, you play great defense, you're in a better position to score. Right now there doesn't seem to be much purpose to our game. We're just sort of out there flying around and even though we're playing hard and guys are, are trying, we're just kind of rudderless. And he's right about all that. But you just, fans need to, you need to understand that, that reacting to NBA results on a nightly basis should not feel anything like acting, reacting to NFL results. It is not, every game is not a, a fork in the road of the season you're about to have. Just think back to any one of the Warriors' four championships here in the Steph Curry area, in the Steph Curry era, or Bay Area, whichever you prefer. But think back to every single championship. What did you know about any of those teams through four games? I mean, the team that started 4-0, and that was good. You know, that was great. The team that started 24-0 was probably That was a pretty good indicator that the year was about to be fantastic. Might I also suggest they did not win a title that year. Yes. So there you go. You know, what do October results mean? I think to some teams, they would mean more. To the Golden State Warriors, it almost means absolutely nothing. Well, what about Draymond's defense? Do you think Draymond gives a rip about October basketball? He's admitted as much where he can't get himself up and lathered and ready to go in games that don't mean much. But he's been up and lathered for these four so far because he's got the other issue. He's been okay. Well, I mean, no, he, I mean, he's he's not been a negative at any point. No, as a player so far. No, and he's, but so he, I think I think when you talk about he's playing against the Lakers, they stink. Um, here's what against Sacramento, is. they stink. He played hard in all of them. Yeah, well, Draymond's always going to play hard, but really good defense. I don't know if we've even seen that from him yet. What he is doing right now is shooting at an offensive clip that you know borders on. Uh, remarkable, considering it's Draymond Green. He's about 60% from the floor already this year, where he is a career 40-something guy. So uh, that's what he has really done well. He started off hitting buckets, making buckets. He's been good at the rim. He hit a couple jumpers. Damon, you want to know what panic was from the 925? Patrick O'Brien is your starting center. When Ike Diagu is at the four. So no, tell people to calm down. Eric Dampier that, on line two. That wasn't panic. That was the acceptance that they were going to be bad that year. Because they were. Right. And and they were bad the year before, Look and they it. were bad the year after. The minutes that were handed out to those teams didn't matter. I didn't hear anyone talking about minutes in the no, Diago era. No, nobody panicked era. about those Warrior teams because they weren't watching them. Well, I was. Those were long nights. <laughs> Those were long, long nights. But they were. But you knew what was coming whenever you went to the arena. Right. Damon, They're not going to be good. They're going to give up 117. They're going to score 99. That's lather, rinse, repeat. Xfinity Mobile text line says, Draymond's been pretty solid. Yeah, and he's really not even out there brass knuckles Draymond yet. He has been pretty solid. Once he goes brass knuckles Draymond... Ten more games from now when they start really buckling down defensively. I'll tell you, this road trip's going to be a good chance for them to go ahead and find some defensive Jesus. Because if they don't, they're going up against some teams that can put up some points.